Previously on Haunted. We're going live, my friend. On every station in every home. The afterlife is on broadcast. They're all hearing it, James. Every radio in the town. All listening to the signal. How is it working this fast? It took days with the others. John! John the Frog! Stay back! Stay back! No! No! Active noise control. If we can find the source of the signal and get a copy of the waveform, in theory, we could copy it, invert the phase, and broadcast it back at them. The two waves would interfere with one another inside the infected and effectively cancel one another out. The truth will drive you mad. It will reside in your brain, rotting and infecting every waking thought you have for the rest of your life. Give me back my friend! Episode 8 Echoes of the Dead Part 4 of 4 Written by Jamie Evans Are we sure that'll hold her? If we keep an eye on her, yes. I don't understand how she got out of them in the first place. She picked the lock, of course. She what? The first day I met Abigail, when she took me to the Rawlinson crime scene, she picked the lock like it was nothing. Bloody hell. Abigail. It's good to see you again, Mr Hunter. I'm so sorry, Mrs Corbin. Why? For letting this happen to her. I've never blamed you for that. Abigail is very independent. She acts of her own free will. It's one of the things that makes me so proud of her. And you're right to be so proud, Mrs Corbin. So let's cut to the chase. Can you save her? And the townspeople? Yes, I think so. Maybe. Oh, great. Glad you sound confident. Let's not forget, we're dealing with something that nobody in recorded history has ever dealt with before. Everything we do is guesswork at this point. Who's the old guy? (laughs) Do you mind? This is Professor Michael Cross. He's an audio expert who used to work in the radio factory, but has since become a lecturer at the University of Lincoln. He sort of, kind of, without really knowing it, helped to do all of this. Wait, what? He built the primary component of the machine that is broadcasting the signal, and he's going to help me stop it. You mean you caused all of this? It's not quite that simple. Have you seen what's going on outside? Of course I have. We were just attacked, after all. If you played even a small role in this insanity, then you are responsible for it. I don't need to stand here and take this. I'm offering to help out of the goodness of my heart. Well, I did have to point a fake gun at you to get you to cooperate. Not the point. Stand down, Deputy Dan. Now is not the time for infighting. So what exactly are we going to do? It's a process called active noise control. It essentially sound as a pressure wave, composed of alternating periods of compression and rarefaction. If we can broadcast a wave of the same amplitude, but with an inverted phase, we can theoretically cancel out the broadcast in their heads. The townspeople will be alright? They should be, yes. The ones who haven't already been killed in the violence. And Abigail? And Abigail? We don't know. Unlike the townspeople, the signal has been wearing away at Abigail for weeks. We've been sticking a plaster over the problem with meditation and distraction techniques, but it's been there all this time. We think that the anti-signal will stop the broadcasts in her head, but based on what we saw with the brain of Mark Rawlinson, it's possible there's too much damage. Oh! I'm so sorry. You're sorry? You're sorry? Don't be sorry. Be right. Fix it. Dan, come on. You owe everything to her. You were a wreck before she came and found you. You owe her this. You think I don't know that? You're wrong. You are. You're wrong. She was talking just like the old Abigail an hour ago. There can't be that much damage, okay? There there, there can't be. We just need to move quickly, that's all. I hope you're right. What's our first step? Get to Greenvale Radio. 
They have the most powerful broadcast tower in town. Presuming Carl isn't broadcasting the signal from there already, which we can assume seeing as regular scheduled radio was playing up until the moment the signal was triggered, we should be able to locate the source of other broadcasts from there. Okay, Mrs. Corbin, I want you to stay here, okay? I don't think I... I can't risk you out in the field. We need as few of us out there as possible. You'll be safe in here. These doors are very old and very heavy. When we leave, I want you to bolt all of them. What about Abigail? She comes with us. It isn't safe to leave her with Cheryl. And we need to administer this cure as soon as we find it. I agree. Okay. Let's get a move on. I think you might have tied a gag a bit tight, Mr. Hunter. I had to. The infected are capable of broadcasting the signal themselves. We can't risk that. In fact, that reminds me, wear these noise protectors around your necks. First sign of the signal, you put them on. Got it? Thanks. Excellent idea. Deputy Dan? Thanks. Still not my fan. I just don't understand how you can be so blasé about this. We're losing her. Because if I don't keep moving, if I let myself think about it for more than a second, I will lose the will to succeed. Believe me, all of that rage you're feeling, burning away in the pit of your stomach, I feel it too. I can't lose her. She's been one of my best friends. I understand. Jesus Christ, look at that. The primary school's on fire. Where are the fire crews? Out of the ruins of the church. Half of them got infected and killed the other half. Wait, ruins of a church? Carl set it on fire. He tried to kill all of us. I see. Poor Cheryl. That church meant so much to her. I suppose Abigail will have lost all of her research equipment. Abigail says you and this Carl guy go back a long way. We were raised together. We even worked together for a brief time before I realised he was heading down a dark path. I parted ways with him at that point. I see. You know, I don't usually condone violence, but... God damn you for not killing him back then. That would have been murder. Having an interest in the occult and burning down a Christian church are two different things. If you say so. The way I see it, he wouldn't have been able to be interested if you'd put a stop to him. Then Abigail might be okay, and the church might still be standing. <laughs> Guys, it's getting difficult to keep hold of her. Can we get a move on? This way. Please, just hold on, Abigail. Is that the radio tower there? Yeah, it is. Come on, guys, we're close. <laughs> Stop it, Abigail! Hold still! Why is she so rolled up all of a sudden? I think that's why. Oh, shit! <laughs> There's like 20 of them. Go, now! James, didn't you say you had a gun? It's plastic. <laughs> plastic? Oh, never mind. I think they're gaining on us. Oh, God. That's Mrs. Rampart. She used to teach me cooking at school. Well, that's a new one to add to the list. Being chased by an actual pitchfork-wielding mob. Bank right! Please be unlocked. Please be unlocked. Inside! Everyone inside! God, oh God! Abigail! Here, here! Peterson, move! Yeah! I'm in! Help me hold the door. Professor! Find something we can block this with. Like what? Use your imagination! No! 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 Shit! I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't hold her. It's okay. Help us hold the door. How's your arm? Looks worse than it is. Man, if you hadn't warned me to move, she would have driven that right through my back. Thank you. Don't mention it. Professor! Give me a hand with this violin, Captain. Heavy as hell. Okay, hopefully that holds them. Now we need to find Abigail and get to the broadcast room. Look out for any staff who might have been here. I bet they've all heard the signal. There's no 
nobody here. That's ominous. Somebody's been here. Look at this wall, James. Symbols. The same symbols Abigail was compulsively drawing. Did your expert ever find out what they mean? They're made up of a mixture of different cultures. Most of it's gibberish, but some phrases kept repeating themselves. He says the word gather was represented multiple times. Also the word empty or void. That's not written in blood, is it? It looks like blood. Whose blood is it? It doesn't matter. We need to get to work. Everyone put on your ear protectors. Professor, can you use their receiver to record the signal on your computer and analyse the waveform? I'll need a few minutes. Pearson and I are going to look for Abigail. We need to find her before she gets out of the building. Then we'll never find her. Okay, let's get on with it. Abigail? Abigail! Do you think it'll work? James and the Professor's plan to neutralise the signal? I don't know, Pearson. I think it had better work because it's the only option we have left. What will you do? Oh, never mind. Best to stay positive, innit? Shh. Did you hear that? It came from up ahead. Remember, whether it's Abigail or another of the infected townspeople, they are still people. We need to hurt them as little as possible. Do you have any cuffs on you? No. I do have these zip ties. Zip ties? Where did you get those? They were in the professor's little kit. I figured a few would come in handy. Good thinking. Okay. Slowly. Ah! Nobody hurt! Ah! Ah! Get her off! Ma'am, I need you to let him go! Get her off me! I don't know what to do! Just grab her! Peterson! The wall! Got it! I'm free! Sorry, ma'am. That should hold her. Peterson, open up that storage cupboard. We'll stick her in there. Okay. I've got it. Ah! Jesus Christ! It's Abigail! Oh, get her! No, Peterson! Wait for me! Peterson! God damn it! You'll just have to wait here. Please, please don't hurt yourself or anyone else. Retreat! Retreat! They've got in! Run! Run! Jesus! It's Reverend Blake! Get him off me! Get off my friend! Oh shit! I broke his nose! Thank you. Let's go. In here! I can't believe I broke a reverend's nose! I guess I'm definitely going to hell for that! I don't know how long I can hold this for. Do you have your phone? Call the station! Try and get back up! Okay, okay. It broadcasts through phones as well? Oh, we're doomed. Radio was one thing, not that many people listen to it these days, but phones? Everyone in town is going to be infected. They won't because you're going to get James and the Professor. Get their magic cure thingy and get out of here. Then you're going to find the source of that broadcast and replace it with the cure. I believe in you, man. What? Always have. I've learned so much from you, man. You're a good cop. It's been an honour to work with you. What are you on about? Why are you talking like this? We're getting out of here, together. No, mate. I don't think so. What do you mean? Where's that blood coming from? What blood? On the floor. Oh, fucking hell. There's tons of it. That's why I'm not going anywhere. Take a look. No! It's the bastard with a pitchfork, innit? When? As soon as I tried blocking the door. He shoved it right through the wood. No, 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 no. No, it, it looks worse than it is. You can survive that. 
Uh, that's a pitchfork in my guts. No, it, it, can't, it can't be that deep. Not if it's gone through the wood as well. Like, a couple of inches, maybe. You can survive that. I think. We both know that the moment I move, these people come swarming in here and kill us both. It isn't worth the risk. Listen. Listen. There's an air conduct right there. For once, being the small of us, it's gonna work in your favour. <coughs> Pearson. We don't have time. I already know everything you're gonna say. No, you won't change my mind. Yes, one of us has to survive uh, to make sure this nightmare ends. Please, Dan, go. Before they break their way in here. I can't. I... There's no hope for me. You need to save the town. Please. Go. You're a good man, Peterson. And a better friend. See you on the other side, brother. Okay, I've turned it off. You can remove your ear protectors now. Hmm? Remove your ear... Oh, hell with it. Ah, oh, are we done? Yes, this is it. The anti-wave. Okay, let's get the others and get out of here. I feel like this is an obvious question, but why don't we just play the anti-wave here? Fight his signal with ours. There's too much risk his signal will outpower us somehow. We need to stop his from broadcasting altogether and then use the anti-wave to knock the signal out of all their heads. Oh, good. The others are back. <sighs> That's not the others. DJ Ghoul, not you too. Let's play some tunes, baby! Ow! <sighs> oh! Move! Is he down? No, and now he's holding a giant shard of glass. Excellent. He's tearing the broadcasting equipment apart. You mean he might know what we're up to? These things are intelligent? Of course they're intelligent. They're people. Well, let's not waste our ancestral theory, shall we? Back the other way! There's a bunch behind us! We can't go back! The DJ's behind us! Where's Abigail? She got away. Damn it! Damn! What about your friend? The tall one? He didn't make it. What? They got him. He saved me. Okay? I'm so sorry. I don't need your sorry. <coughs> what do we do? We're trapped! I don't think there's anything we can do. I think this might be as far as we get, I'm afraid. No, no, not like this! <laughs> What's going on? Why have they stopped? They rolled back up into the backs of their heads. What are they doing? Everyone, put your ear protectors back on now! They're just leaving us alone. Why? There must be enough of them to strengthen the signal. Strengthen it? For, for what? I don't know, but it's not good. We can follow them. Find out where the source is. Abigail will be there as well. You know it's going to be dangerous, right? We may well not come back from this. I know. Well, count me out. I've done my part. No, sorry, am I going to follow the horde of radio zombies to their home base? No, thank you. Then you stay here. You'll be safe here now that they've all gone. This should be simple to use, yeah? Just plug it in and hit start. Good luck. Whiskey? I think so. Who'd have thought it would come down to me and you? Unlikely duo. For Abigail? For Abigail. Deputy Dan and I followed a small group of the infected. Along the way, we saw a few uninfected peeking out of windows, 
a few even risked cracking open their doors to take a look. The infected didn't even try to attack them. As I suspected, they were being drawn somewhere, ready to broadcast. Every normal human being we passed I told to stay inside, lock their doors and whatever they did, not to turn on the radio or listen to their phones. Dan didn't talk much. Perhaps he was thinking about his friend Peterson who had sacrificed himself to let Dan escape. Or perhaps he was thinking of Abigail and the seemingly impossible chance we had of saving her. Perhaps it was both. I couldn't tell, and I didn't ask. Those infected with the signal led us across town to the old warehouse that had once belonged to a radio company. I allowed myself the indulgence of a small, dry laugh. It was the same warehouse Abigail and I had visited weeks ago. We had theorized then that we had just missed the culprit behind this abominable series of events, and how right we'd been. How much misery and suffering could we have prevented if we'd been just ten minutes earlier that day? As we approached the building, the first light of dawn was tinting the horizon, golden flames burning at the velvet blanket of night. Something about that spurred me on. James. What? She's here. Abigail. She's just standing in line, like all of them, waiting. Oh, this isn't her at all. She's always been an individual, never part of a mindless crowd like this. Dan, are you prepared in the event that we can't? No, don't. Just... don't. Okay. Now, I'm thinking our best approach is a surprise attack. There's a manhole cover over there. We can duck down into the sewers and come out at the back of the building. Then... No need. We can walk right in. They won't stop us. What do you mean? The element of surprise could... We've already been seen. Look. Is that him? Is that Carl Trevino? That's him. Look at him waving at us. They won't attack us because Carl wants us to come in. He wants me to witness his victory. Let's just hope he doesn't know what we're up to. Here, take the SD chip. You need to put it in the machine whilst I keep him talking. Let's kick his ass. Finally! Talk about holding up the show. Uh, James, I'm afraid your invite wasn't plus one. If you shoot him, you go through me. What? I mean it, Carl. I've had enough senseless violence to last me a lifetime. You never did have the stones for this sort of work, did you, James? What sort of work do you call this? It's my work. My machine. To contact the dead. You know, Thomas Edison tried that once before as well. Didn't work out well for him either. You judge me all you like, sir. She, she was everything to me. She was all I had. Wouldn't you do it? If you thought you could talk to the precious person you lost. It, it was difficult at first, but I made the machine work. I can hear her now. Oh, James, can you imagine? Here it is, my old friend. My gift to you. What? I have bigger and better plans. More important beings with which to communicate. I want you by my side, James. Just like old times. But I know you're as good as useless while you still have unfinished business. What's he talking about? The whole reason you went down this path. The desire that shaped your entire life. You can use the machine, James. Talk to them again. Finally have your answers. My parents? That's right. They're out there, James. Whatever comes next. They're why you devoted your life to supernatural study, isn't it? Trying to prove that some form of afterlife existed. So that you can know that at least part of them still existed. Yes. That's all I've ever wanted. So, do you understand? desire 
the instinct to cling to a loved one. Yes. Every day since they've died, I've wished to speak to them again. To know they're safe. Do it, James. Listen to the signal. Communicate with your loved ones. What a cruel man you are. To prey on the grieving. James. Don't you see how barbaric this is? You're using human beings as, as antennae. Driven to the point of death. One foot in this life and one foot out of it. It was the only way. They have to be near death to attune with the spirits. It was not the only way. You could have left this woman alone. You could have left all of them alone. You could have tried to move on. You could have refused to turn into this. You can't just take your grief and your pain and destroy the lives of others in the hope that you might feel better. We should all be ashamed. Every man in this room. We've all lost people. We've all suffered. And we've all behaved like monsters. You have taken other human lives and used them like guinea pigs in your mad experiments, Dr. Halliday. Dan here lost his friend and allowed it to eat away inside of him. A ball of rage chewing him from the inside out. Well, open your eyes, Dan, because giving in to that makes you like him. Carl, you lost your parents too, and we grew up in that orphanage and it was hard. It was so hard, but you let it turn your soul black. You came out of there seeking power and gain without a care for others. And I suppose you're so much better, St. James. Better? No, I can never claim to be that. I locked myself away, a voluntary prisoner in a life without human connection, without friendships or relationships, because I was terrified of being hurt again. I spent so much time chasing the idea that part of them lived on, I forgot to live myself. Instead, I drank and moved from job to job. It is one of the great injustices of this world that the four of us are standing here, whilst a woman who has hurt nobody, who has seen only the good in people, who even gave you a chance, Carl, stands out there as one of your mindless zombies. Her name is Abigail Corbin, and she is better than any of us. I don't care if we grew up together, Carl. You hurt Abigail. I will never forgive you. Why do you care so much about her? She is nothing to you. We grew up together, James. We survived that wretched place together. She is nobody. Nothing. You'll see. You may not want your answers. I still want mine. And I'm going to get them! Load the anti-wave now. Please, please don't. She's all I have. Linda is all I have. And how has that worked out for you? Have you even heard her yet? She's in there. In the sea of voices. Look at what you've done. What would Linda say if she saw all of this? If she saw what you'd done? Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's loading now. It's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going after Carl. No, wait, I... Let me do this. Don't let anybody stop the anti-wave from playing. On it. Please. I need to know. I need you to point me in the right direction. I need guidance. Yes, I promise. I'll uphold my end. Tell me where to start. That's enough, Carl. Go away. What language is that? That sounds old. Very old. One of the oldest in existence. It's taken me a very long time to learn it. Please, tell me that the signal isn't what I think it is. It's not spirits in the afterlife at all, is it? The spirits are there, but... 
That's not who's talking. Spirits don't drive humans insane. You did it. You madman. You did it. It's real? The things that hide in the dark, shunned from this reality. They don't hate us, James. They hate what banished them. They don't hate us. Please tell me that you didn't make a deal. You know how that ends. I did what I had to do. I meant what I said. I really do see you like a brother. I understand why you're so against me. You don't remember everything that went on in that place. N neither do I, but I have a direction now. I'm going to uncover everything that happened to us. And whether you like it or not, I will reveal what went on. I'd rather we did it together, but I see you aren't ready yet. Carl, it doesn't need to be this way. Yes, it does. I still remember. I remember everything they did to us. Every whipping, every cut, every time we were locked in that dark cupboard and left for days until we pissed ourselves and cried until our throats were ruined. You'll remember, James. In time. None of what you're saying makes any sense. Do you still have your brand? I bet you barely look at it, do you? I didn't for a long time. It was just... there. Just a part of me. But they aren't a part of us, James. They were put there. My brand? You mean this? Yes. That's it. Just like mine. This is just a scar from the car accident. No, James. Look at it. It's a pattern. A symbol. It's their symbol. They never cared about us in the orphanage, James. We were property. Property! I hope you change your mind, James. I hope you join me on my journey. We're going to stop the signal. Go ahead. I've learned everything I needed to learn. You risked an entire town. Sacrificed how many lives just to get the first clue on your little scavenger hunt? Yes, because the ones who raised us need to pay, and I will pay any price to ensure that they do. Carl. If you change your mind, I'll give you the first clue. Little Hope. Little Hope? What does that mean? Carl. Carl, what does that mean? Carl! It's working! Look, they've fallen into chaos again. Come on, come on, come on, give us this. Just give us this. What have I done? All these people. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I'm scared. I know that too. You try to peek at what comes next, but sometimes it's better not to know. I hope... I hope that whatever does come next, you find your daughter. Thank you. James, it's her! Is she okay? Is she normal? I don't know. She's coming up here towards us, but, but look at her. She's walking funny. Where'd all that blood come from? I don't know. I can't tell if it's hers or someone else's. Abigail. Oh, Abigail. Stay away! It's still in me. No, the anti-wave is erasing it. Ah! James, something's wrong. It's too deep. I can hear it. Oh, God, it burns. It's burning me. The signal is leaving everyone else and focusing entirely on her. Whatever barriers Carl and Halliday have weakened, something on the other side is reaching out. Do something. We need to do something. I don't know what to do. I don't know. There's nothing I can do. I'm useless. I can't just stand here, but I don't know where to begin. This is all wrong. Abigail should have never been in this position. She wouldn't have given up. She's too strong for that. She would... Oh, God. What? I know what to do. <laughs> yes! Oh, Abigail, come here. 
I'm finally listening to you, Abigail. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Listening to her? About what? Optimism. It's not only for the foolish. Take Melissa out of that chair. Not if I touch her, I think she'll die. She's been dead for weeks, I'm afraid, Deputy. Dr. Halliday put her in that coma, knowing she would only wake up to be used as a battery in his machine. I'm so sorry, Melissa. What are you doing? You can't put Abigail in that thing? Of course I can. It's how we're going to fix her. Bloody hell. I hope you're right. What can I do? Go to the computer, shut down the original broadcast. Just leave our anti-wave playing. Also, look out the window and tell me how the others are doing. They all seem fine. I mean, they're wandering around confused, but it looks like everyone's back to normal. Okay. Okay. Listen to me, Abigail. I know you're in there. We're going to help you, but you need to fight, okay? What are you doing now? I'm reversing the Pythagoras prism. Halliday was using it to strengthen the signal going out. We're going to use it to strengthen the anti-wave coming in. That might work. You've done it. you saved her. No. We're just throwing her a line. Abigail, if she is still in there at all, needs to take it. She needs to save herself. Okay. Here we go. Come on, Abigail. I know you're still in there. This prism can bring thoughts to reality. That's what Kayla and Raven did. Well, I can do it too. There is no damage to your brain. The signal is gone, and it left no trace on you, Abigail. Believe it. You can do this, Abigail. I believe you can. (laughs) Look at that. Me believing in something again. Isn't that novel? (laughs) That's all because of you, Abigail. All because of your unwavering spirit and your unbreakable courage. You remind me of the best parts of myself. Parts I lost a long time ago. Abigail, you are my hero. Please, come back. James! James, I can hear you! Help me! He's not coming. Nobody is coming. You belong here now. Belong with us. Please, leave me alone! Join us. Join us. Join us. Please, leave me alone. I'm so tired, please. I'm going home! Ah! Abigail! Abigail! 
Look at me. Can you see me? I can see you. How many fingers am I holding up? Four, you silly man. Four. Yes. Oh, Abigail, I'm so happy you're back. Abby. Oh, Abby. Um, guys, I'm happy to see you too, but, uh, that's a little tight. Guys, guys. Shut up. Mum, you can stop hugging me. I don't think I'm ever going to stop hugging you. I was so scared, Abigail. I thought you had faith everything would turn out okay. I did. Faith doesn't exist in the absence of fear. It exists in spite of fear. (laughs) I like that, Mrs Corbyn. Might get it tattooed on my arm. I'm sorry about your church. It's just a building. I'm just glad we're all safe. How's your arm, Dan? It's it's a bit sore, but much better since the doctor saw to it properly. Thank you. I also wanted to thank you for the lovely service you held for Peterson. It was very touching. It was my honour. I didn't know him well, but I know a good man when I see one. Even when they think they're washed up and only good for drinking. I'll just be loading the bags. It doesn't seem real, does it? It's only been a few days. The town cleaned itself up so quickly. And nobody's saying anything. Nobody's talking about that night. Of course they aren't. Talking about it would mean facing the actions they committed under the influence of the signal. It would mean expanding the definition of their small little reality to admit that there's something more out there. Better to ignore it, move on, keep calm and carry on. Brits are good at that. Or oh, better yet, blame it on the immigrants. Look at this headline. Were riots down to illegals poisoning our water supply? Oh, Jesus Christ! Sorry, Reverend. Little Britain at its finest. What about the prism? What did you do with that? Oh, yes. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <sighs> Isn't that a priceless artefact? It's dangerous. Too dangerous to keep around. Any more bags, Abigail? Just this one, thanks. Where are you two off to? Well, now James has got his passion back for ghost hunting, and seeing as all my podcast equipment was destroyed, we've decided to hit the road. Freelance paranormal investigators. Like Ghostbusters? Who are you going to call? Well, you... Your number's on the website. I don't like using my phone either, silly device. Oh my god! How did you not get that was Ghostbusters? I've never read it. What? Um, seen it? (laughs) That's better. We should. You'd like it. Are you going after Carl Trevino? Possibly. He left me with a hint as to where he was going, so he obviously wants me to follow. That's probably not a good thing. Can I... Come? You want to come with us? Yeah. Well, can he? This isn't about getting revenge? No. I'm ready to open my eyes. I want to learn more about this weird world you live in. That's a good answer. You can come. But I'm in charge, got it? If you're part of the gang, you play by my rules. Of course. I mean it. I know, I know. I promise to do as I'm told. You're in charge, big guy. Was it just me, or did that sound like he was mocking me? Are you sure you'll be alright, Mum? Of course I will, dear. The council intend to rebuild the church. But in the meantime, they've asked me to fill in for Reverend Blake over at St Mary's. I'll have plenty on my hands. I don't like the thought of you being alone. I'm never alone, Abigail. I always have you. In spirit. I'm just so happy for you. I know this is something you've dreamed of for a long time. I'm so glad you're fulfilling it now. I love you, Mum. I love you too, sweetie. Don't be a stranger. I won't. I'll see you around. Of course. Stay safe, all of you. 
We've had loads of requests for our services already. Someone claims to have seen a werewolf in Salisbury. There's an old manor out east that apparently is haunted by a ghost of a Spanish merchant. Oh! Someone in Scotland claims their village is being pillaged by goblins. Let's go to Scotland! <laughs> Why not? Let's hunt Nessie while we're at it. Sorry. I already did that. There's nothing there. You already hunted the Loch Ness Monster? I'm a paranormal investigator living in the United Kingdom. Of course I've hunted Nessie. How are you feeling, Abigail? Not been drawing any symbols or anything, have you? Ha! <laughs> no, thankfully. I tell you, it's just so nice to feel normal again. It's so nice to get a good night's sleep without those awful nightmares. Nightmares? Oh, it was all due to the signal. I kept having this same dream over and over. There was this man, this terrible man, shrouded in darkness, but his eyes... His eyes were... Cutting right through you. Yeah! Then he'd raise his hand and point at me. Then he'd open his mouth and you couldn't hear what he was saying. But you knew in the very depths of your soul that it was terrible? What? Yes! That's exactly right! How did you know? What does this mean? It means the nightmare wasn't anything to do with the signal. It means something else is going on. We all had the same nightmare. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. With special guest Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, David Anthony Green, Harry McElroy, Benton Hodges and special guest star Michael Heath. With David Gardner as Carl Trevino. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next season as our story continues. <laughs>